It has been almost six years since I introduced this channel to Walrus Grandpa. Yeah, crazy, I know. I made a literary who video on Yuku Yuku Ma and the history of pirate theater. I recommend you go watch that before you watch this video. But long story short, pirate theater was a series of play starring Walrus Grandpa and his faithful first mate Yuku Seal, who fought against evil Captain Hookbeak and other threats. The place ran from 2003 to 2007, after which Yuku Yukuma was retooled into Yuku Park. Mark Antila's website has a ton of material about this place, including an album of photos and an album with links to the songs from it. However, this is merely the tip of the iceberg, and no, I am not going to make this an iceberg explained video. All these years of knowing about Antila's website, I never really thought of using the Wayback Machine on this site. And so I decided to go all the way back to year 2004, when the website first launched. What I found was a naughty sort of groundbreaking, or something to that effect. I found the original bios for all the pirate theater characters in Finnish. You might remember that all the bios were visible on one specific photograph, which also showcases Walrus Campus all design, but they're unreadable and not all of them are visible either. Here, however, you get to freely read these bios, as well as see the illustrations accompanying them. Here is Walrus Grandpa's old design, in high quality. Yeah, it's a bit uh, unwelcoming compared to the new design. We still don't have the photos of the original costume, which I was able to stand close to as a kid, but this will suffice. Now, since these are all bios, you would expect there to be some delicious lore in it. Well, you'd be correct. Let us begin with Walrus Grandpa himself. Sea Captain Walrus Grandpa has a seafaring pedigree. His father and grandfather were Walrus Grandpas and so on. It can be said that Walrus Grandpa has lived for centuries adventuring on the seas of the world together with his best friend Yuku Seal. Walrus Walrus Grandfather Theophilus Walrus Grandpa's ship was wrecked in Yuku Yuku Mine in 1753 and is now a theater. We now know that Walrus Grandpa is a title rather than his real name. But we get more interesting aspects of this later. One other note bio of our main cast is the bio of Rille, Hookbeak's baby-like henchman. Rille is a captain's aide known for his neck and pacifier. The story goes that Rille, as a small baby, accidentally walked onto Captain Hookbeak's pirate ship to was leaving port. Without his parents, Rille took refuge in his pacifier and sometimes still when Rille finds himself in a scary situation, he will after instinctively put the pacifier in his mouth. And then we get into the characters who didn't appear in the well-known 2005 play or didn't appear in any place at all. The wisest chicken in the world was originally Walrus Grandpa's ordinary dumb chicken, but it so happened that once when Walrus Grandpa was fishing, the sea king himself, Alto Parta, caught in his net. Walrus Grandpa freed King Altoparta from the net, and as a gift from his generosity, he threw some magic dust on Grandpa's ship. It just so happened that Walrus Grandpa's chicken happened to be hiding on board, and it too received a dose of magic dust. At the same time, chicken grew a doctor's hat on its head and learned to talk. However, Walrus Grandpa prefers to think of its word as stupid rather than wise. The world's wisest chicken did get its own song in the Walrus Grandpa album. It's a mystery if the chicken debuted in the 2004 play or the 2006 play. But here is footage of the chicken in action. Then you get two characters who never appeared in any play period to my knowledge. First are Heiniain, which I unofficially translated to leaflet creatures, who were mentioned at the end of Merituli Puhalta. Moit 
and they also got their own reggae style song. Live the creature is a small, happy-looking creature that lives on the sandy shores of Kalajoki, buried in the sand. The best way to spot them is to look for a tuft of hay on top of a sand dune, which is actually a leaflet creature tuft of hair. There are known to be hundreds of them on the sandy beaches of Kalajoki, but they are difficult to spot because they are hidden in the sand and hay. They are also not mischievous. The only harm they cause is that they sometimes sneak into a beach towel while the children are swimming. Sometimes when you, walk, when you walk past a leaflet creature, it may also tickle you with its long, hairy looking hair. Then we get the craziest by or by far, Raymari. Raymari has also been mentioned in a couple of songs, but he made no appearance whatsoever in any of the plays. I did name the ship Wallus Grandpa uses in Cosmic Battle after him. So let's see what there is the deal with this orange haired boy. Raymari is Wallus Grandpa's grandson who lives in Wallus Grandpa's house. Raymari spends most of his time playing with Golden Winter Fair. Raymari's father is called Hermanni, who is the son of Wallus Grandpa. Hermanni has been at sea for years and no one knows when he will return. By the way, Raymari's father later becomes Wallus Grandpa just like Raymari will. Another mystery is where is the Raymari's mother disappeared to? Is she also at sea or just lost? Raymari doesn't have much time to think about that though, because he has a good time in Wallus with lots of playmates like Yuku Seal and Nicole Dunlin, who Raymari has a cross on. Here Raymari can meet you at Yuku Yukuma in Kalayuki Hirkaserki, or you can see him playing at the yard of Wallus Grandpa's house. I'm... Uh, what? Uh-huh. Okay, so yes. Wallus Grandpa's grandson is a human, but he will one day become Wallus Grandpa. Or is Wallus Grandpa son of Wallus, but Raymari is a human? Lists of so many unanswered questions. Go to someone who is experienced with European theme park theatre plays. This backstory might sound awfully familiar. This does confirm that Pier Pirate Theatre was quite inspired by Norway's Diary Parkins Captain Sabertooth plays, as it also has a boy whose father went missing at sea, is a track to a blonde chick of different origin, and who really wants to step into the shoes of protagonist. Raymari is definitely inspired by Pinky, and too many things match to call it a coincidence. That does make me wonder if Raymari ever appeared in the park as a walk-around character, as the end of the bio seems to advertise. I never saw him, and was he going to be played by someone, or be in a mascot costume? Considering how outside of talking head all the characters were mascots, I'm going to guess he was also going to be a mascot costume. I could, however, see Raymari playing a role similar to Snufkin in Moomin Theater plays, which were also done by Antilo, where he speaks for the custom characters. But I guess in the end they wanted to go with a backtrack audio for the plays. And if you thought that was weird, here is Poseidon standing, King Altaparta's Bio. The Sea King Altaparta is the Lord of the Sea, revered by all who live in the sea. The story goes that despite his greatness, the Altapartaka once got caught in the fishing nets of Wallus Grandpa and couldn't get out himself. Wallus Grandpa and Yukusil helped Altaparta out of the nets, and in return, Altaparta threw magic dust all over Wallus Grandpa's ship. At the same time, a miracle happened. Wallus Grandpa gave miraculous magical powers, Yukusil learned the human language, and Wallus Grandpa's stupid chicken grew a doctor's hat on its head. Wait, magic powers? Yeah, outside of this build, there is no reference to these magic powers anywhere else in the series. I guess that must be from the same source as Donkey Kong's magic bananas. He wished for a lot of bananas, but they were magic bananas that gave him superpowers so he could fight off bad guys in the jungle. And lastly, there is Fairy Golden Wind's bio. 
is thus half distinct with. There is one thing that distinguishes Golden Wing from other fairies, and that is that she can turn into an ordinary girl at any time when she is called Tulante. This is mentioned in Golden Wing's song. But it's never mentioned that she will be called Tulante. I wonder if this was ever planned for a future play, along with the beauty in Raymond's character. Rest of the website contains section talking about the Fallus will play area, the theater, the music album, and the book, which has this rather trippy illustration in its page. The book is available in some bookstore online, which is surprising and I might buy it one day, but that's a story for another time. After seemingly finding everything I could, I found one big section talking about the video versions of plays. It said that the 2003 play will be entering video, and that 2004 play will be released in the summer of 2005. While I know that 2004 and 2005 plays got DVDs, I had no idea 2003 play also got that one. I wanted answers to my question, so I went to later dates of the website. Then the website said that 2004 and 2005 DVDs were available, but 2003 VHSs had run out. Wait, VHSs? And there we have some lost media for us folks. On top of the 2004 DVD, we also have the 2003 VHS copy of the play. I personally feel that 2004 play DVD is a bigger priority for me, because I have zero clue what happens in it. Then again, 2003 VHS is the only play with the old Arnold Scramble costume, so take your pick. I did also notice that something new had appeared on the sidebar of the site. Animation. The website talking about how all the Scramble characters were also designed to get a possible animation series, and that there was an animation demo pitched to various executives, and produced by Yarmo Kempine and that anyone could view. I click on the link, and I downloaded a file on my computer. And this discovery is the reason I made this video in the first place. Enjoy! Tällä kertaa onnistuimme pakenemaan kapteeni piikkinokka apulaisine. Mutta seikkailu ei vielä ollut ohi. Aarrekartta nimittäin vei meidät paikkaan, jollaista emme olleet nähneet edes pahimmissa painajaisissa. Kohtasimme olennon, millaista emme olleet koskaan ennen nähneet. Uskallammekohan me kertoa sen näille maakravuille? Au, 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 au. Hyvä. Kuunnelkaa ja seuratkaa tarkasti. Sadly the video ends here. But good lord was my mind blown. The animation itself is rather simplistic. Uh, Walter Scrumple looks like a VTuber here with his position and rigging, and we don't even see Yukusiel at all. But again, good lord, I don't think anyone else has seen this video but me. It's even better than Walter Scrumple's voice by his actual voice actor Juha Saarinen. It's clear for me that Marku Antila and the crew working on this series had high hopes for this to become a franchise. The amount of passion that poured into this series is immeasurable, which makes the sudden end of the series very bittersweet. There are still so many unanswered questions about both this series and the lore, like what happened to Raymar's parents? What was the thing Walrus Grandpa and Yukusiel saw? What magic powers does Walrus Grandpa have? What ultimately led to Yuku Yukuma acting the pirate theater plays? Were they underperforming? Did they do it because they wanted to replace Yukusiel and Walrus Grandpa with this they call a soulless mismatch? We likely never will get these answers, but the story is not over yet. We still have both 2003 VHS, the 2004 DVD, as well as the children's book to provide some answers to our questions, and also explain the lore to Wallus Grandpa's universe. Any Finnish viewers might could possibly help me with this, if they ever find a copy of any of this, or have work for Yukikuma in the past, they could contact me. There's also Antila's personal email, which is on his website, but I am hesitant to contact it just yet. But until then, we'll have to wait until we unearth another treasure from this gone, but not forgotten, series of plays. Also, I mentioned Juha Saarin earlier. I was able to find out some of his non yukuma songs, which he performed in bands known as Big Saarinen and Big Boy. 
and they are bangers. I will end this video on his cover of We're on American Band by Grand Funk Railroad.